Welcome to our new Anno 1800 episode for perfect stamp and layout. And as always, we'll also look at the great items for each of those productions. This is today another big episode in the new world because we're gonna look at 12 different stamps. Going from just the basic poncho and wool production to the bombing production with the cotton in the middle. So there's quite a lot, let's dive right in. But also remember that all of those stamps and layout will be on my Discord community. You can download them for free on my Discord community, including one zip file that has all of the stamp for the old world. Okay, so as I said, first and foremost, just the basic poncho production. You are at the beginning of the game and you just want simple but efficient layout. Here it is. With this, you will produce eight poncho, which will definitely be enough for quite a while, probably something around like 2000 journaleros and you have the perfect ratio for the alpaca wool. You have the warehouse and the fire station in the middle, then you have on the side the poncho downers, and on the outside you have the alpaca farms, without any silo, just normal ones. And if you are at the beginning of the game and you don't need all of this production, don't worry, just put the stamp in the blueprint mode and then just build what you need. You know, maybe you only need one at the beginning, then you put two and then to four. Similarly, when you move to the new world at the beginning, you will probably want a cotton production. This cotton production will be useful for quite a few things. First of all, you will need it for the fur coats, right? This is the only place where you can make the cotton to send to the old world to make your cotton. You may also want to use it to make sales, for example, right? So you're gonna need a cotton production. Again, this is quite a basic one, even if it's slightly big, you probably don't need the whole thing right away. But again, you can just use the blueprint mode over here and not build the whole thing. But with this, you will be producing eight cotton fabric per minute with the perfect ratio for the cotton. This is basically four of these over here cotton meal and eight because this is a one minute production for the cotton plantation. It's 144 modules if you don't have items or tractor, those type of things. So it will be actually quite big. And in the middle, we have the fire station, police station and warehouse that you'll probably have to upgrade. So again, just the basic normal production. And last but not least, if you start to have obreros, you're gonna want the bombing production. And this will use both of these. This will use the alpaca wool. This will also use the cotton. All of this will actually be made into something. So for example, the cotton will be made into cotton fabric. The alpaca wool over here will be made into felt. And then both the felt and the cotton fabric will be transformed into bombing in the bombing weaver. We have in the middle, as always, a fire station, police station, and the warehouse. And this is, you know, the basic production. With this, you're gonna make two bombings with perfect ratios. You can see we have the cotton fabric over here with the cotton. And then at the bottom, we have the felt. And I just realized we're actually making more alpaca wool that we need to. Um, but it is a nice rectangle, so I like it like this. Sorry, I'm not gonna change it. So maybe, you know, you can pause one of these if you want. <laughs> or what you can do is also have, you know, a poncho donor next to it, right? You can add a poncho donor and maybe another warehouse. And that way you're doing both the bombing and the poncho. To be honest, at that point, you may also want to start moving into trade union. So that's why we're gonna move into trade union right away. And we're gonna ignore the mistake I made. So trade unions, we're gonna have quite a few. Let's start with the alpaca farms. We have the basic alpaca farms without any silos. This is this, in one trade union, you can see we're fitting quite a lot. We are actually fitting 28 alpaca farm in just this one trade union. So of course, without working condition or items, this is 56. But as always, obviously you realize that you can quickly get to at least 100, as long as you put a couple of items. It's quite a compact and efficient layout. But if you have any DLC, you'll probably want to move into this one, which also has the silos, right? We move over here with the silos. We have the trade union, of course, in the middle. So instead of 28, we only have 24. But as you can see, our production has increased by quite a lot. We're now above 100, 128. And again, this is without any items, right? This is just thanks to the silos. So of course, this will require a bit of corn, which you could put on the outside, right? You could have easily a couple of uh, corn farms over here, over there, over there, just to make it a rectangle if you wanted. I didn't do it because usually if you have a trade union like this, you'll probably also have a trade union for the corn, which by the way, will be in our next episode. But here yeah, we have over here a way better production for alpaca wool 
you know, a lot of alpaca wool. And this could be, you know, for your poncho. This could also be for the felt that you need for your bombin weavers. Or it could be the felt that you want for your billiard tables in the old world. Those type of things. Making all of those layouts for you all, creating those stamps does take quite a bit of time. So I'd love for you to smash the like button. Don't wait for the end of the episode. If you're still here, you're probably enjoying it. And remember to stick to the end because I'm also going to cover a lot of items. But before, as I said, this alpaca wool, you may want to use for your poncho. So it is, this is the trade union for the ponchos. Sort of similar layout to things you may have seen in the past because all of those buildings have similar size, right? When you know the size of a building, it's the same size, it's going to be the same layout, obviously. In this case, we can fit 38. So we are talking about almost 80 without any items or working conditions. So yeah, you can definitely go above 100, no problem. In particular, if you give electricity, that's already going to be a huge boost. Now let's move with the cotton. And similarly, we have different farms. This first one over here is the normal. You don't have anything, you know, you don't have tractors, you don't have silos. This is your normal cotton production. We're talking about 32 cotton plantation, but they each take one minute, right? So it's only 32 if you don't have anything like items or working condition. Still a lot more than the eight we had before, though. <laughs> but we can definitely improve this with silos and tractors, right? We have this new one over here. All of the buildings, of course, as always, are in the range of the trade union. So if you put an item, it's going to work for all of them. We have less of them, obviously. Instead of 32, we have now 24. And with this, it will take a lot less farmers. So that's great. But we move to 160 already of production without items or anything, right? It's just, as always, the silo and the tractor barns. I mean, especially the tractors. Remember, this is plus 200 minus 50% workforce and the cotton one out of three cycle. This is really overpowered. I love it. Of course, do remember to add warehouses on each corner. Then if this island is not a zero workforce island, also remember to add police station and fire station. But yes, this is your perfect cotton production. All of this cotton can go into this trade union over here to make a lot of cotton fabric. This is with the cotton mill, which by the way is the exact same size as the fell producer building. So it's actually is the exact same, you know, layout and trade union. We can put the exact same number. I don't remember 45, you know, 45, 45. Perfect. So 90 and 90 for both. Of course, again, add a couple of uh, items and you'll be golden. For the alpaca wool and the cotton, at least as far as I'm aware, you can't really do anything with the hacienda. So I'm not showing you any today, but in the next episode, we're going back to the hacienda. We are not finished though. We still have the trade union for the bombing waivers. It's a slightly different one because the size is quite different. Uh, you know, it's a different shape of buildings. We can still fit quite a lot, as you can see, into this great layout. We're actually talking about 30 bombing weavers. But that's not all. Last but not least, I've also made a combined trade union. You may remember we did that quite a lot in the old world. It is a trade union one trying to fit a lot of the buildings for a certain production in one trade union. In this case over here, there are actually some buildings that are outside. You could, you know, if I delete, for example, this one and I get this closer, you could. But anyway, the idea here is there's so many buildings. I knew I couldn't really fit all of them. But basically what you can see is we can fit a lot of those bombing weavers over here inside. Then I have a lot of the cotton mill that are over here, right? They're also in range. And then on the outside, we have the fell producers. Then we have, you know, all of the alpaca wool over here, over there. You know, it's a block. So actually, if you want to add this block again over here, you can easily add it or even there because anyway, they are not in range uh, anymore. And similarly, the cotton, you know, cotton in this case with the tractor, you could also add if you wanted, you know, the silos. Um, this thing anyway is not going to be at equilibrium at all until you put some items. And you can see, for example, over here, I'm not producing at all enough cotton. Uh, fabric. I'm producing too much cotton already for the cotton fabric. But the idea is just to show you, you know, in one simple layout, especially, you know, you have the rectangle over there and then on the outside, you can put all of your small warehouses. You can put your police station, fire station and start adding some of the base production like this one or this one. Obviously, you'll need also the uh, farm modules like this, right? But yeah, this was you know, the last I wanted to show you, which is 
not the prettiest, not the most efficient, but it can be useful in particular when you don't have a lot of influence, so you can't put a lot of trade union, this can be useful. So we have looked at 12 different stamps and layouts, but now let's look at the items. First of all, the alpaca farms. In my opinion, what you're gonna want to do is to have zero workforce. With this, you'll be able to increase the working condition by 50%, but this will not even impact you know, the happiness of your population, you won't even actually need population, you won't need fire station or riot. The way you're going to do this is you're going to use the livestock farmer. It's going to decrease the workforce needed by 60% already, and you're also going to get a bit of productivity 30%. Then you can use, for example, the printing press. This is minus 40%, so you're already at zero in terms of workforce, and you still gain a bit of productivity. And then last but not least, you can use the fabulous feed yard. Plus 70% of productivity, that's a really good one. Now if you don't have the Anarchist DLC and you don't have the printing press, you can also use the extremely loud bell. This is minus 50% for the workforce, so you'll get zero too, but you won't get the productivity boost. Now that you have all of this wool, what should you do with it? Well, probably you're gonna want, you know, some poncho, some poncho downers. Cristobal is a really good one increasing the productivity by 50%, but more importantly, giving you work clothes every two cycles and fur coats every three cycles. So with this, you can probably produce a lot of ponchos and just have enough fur coats without even having a fur coat production. And if you add Mariana, the master stylist, you're again getting even more work clothes. So once again, you probably don't even need another work clothes production. Then another one that's quite good is the optimized automatic loom because it will increase your productivity by 50 and reduce workforce. It is also possible, by the way, to get to zero workforce if you do something like this optimized automatic loom, and also this one over here, you're also bringing minus 20% with uh, this other loom, so you're at minus 50, and then you can add the extremely loud bell, and you're at zero. Now, talking about the alpaca wool, you can also make some felt. For this one, there's actually not a lot of items, there are actually no items that is specific for the felt producer, so you will only use the items that you can use on all productions, including, you know, Angela to produce electricity, that could be definitely a great one, or you also have Ferras, you know, plus 50%. You can use again the extremely loud bell if you want to try to get to 0% workforce, or zero workforce, sorry. So yeah, there are some basic ones, but nothing extraordinary there. Now let's move to the cotton plantation. And that's basically similar to what we saw last week for the plantain, the banana. You're probably gonna want to use the horticulturalist to really decrease your number of modules, increase a bit your productivity and get some things for free. Also the arborist and in particular, if you already have the tractors, you're already at minus 50% workforce. So for sure, try to get to zero workforce, for example, with the miraculous steel plow or maybe even just the extremely loud bell. Then with this cotton, you're gonna put it in the cotton mill. And once again, there's not that many. You have sort of the all production one that we looked at like Angela. You also have the looms. So, you know, we can definitely put the looms, but that's pretty much it. So very similar to what I said before. And then last but not least, you have the bombing weavers. This is quite similar to the poncho, but not exactly, because you cannot put the looms. Don't ask me why, but at least we can still put Cristobal, and Ariana to get a lot of work clothes and fur coats, but the last one will probably be Ferras or Angela, depending if you already have electricity or not. So here it is, ladies and gents, several different productions and quite important ones, both for the new world but also to support your old world, for example, for the fur coats. We looked at 12 different stamps, a lot of items. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below or on my Discord community if you have any questions, thoughts or requests. And remember that all of those stamps are available on my Discord community. Thank you for watching, smash the like button and I hope to see you next time.